Today, I will give a lecture about True Mother's Birth and True Parents' Life courses. First, as you see from the contents, we will briefly cover the following material. True Mother's family background, the foundation to receive the Messiah and the preparation for the bride, True Mother's birth and growth, True Mother's perfection and value, True Parent's holy wedding, True Mother's life and change of status, and the results of True Mother having completed her responsibility. You may have heard this many times already, but we know that our Heavenly Parent prepared the chosen people and established central figures in preparation for sending the true parents to earth. We know that history was prepared for this. Regarding true parents' life courses, stories about true mother abound. The Dalai River story is among them. China often invaded Korea. Some scholars say that Korea suffered attacks some 900 times. Others have given even larger numbers. Each time a new dynasty appears, it consolidates the Chinese territory and begins to annex other countries for unification. When this happens, each time this happens, China has many internal wars to make from the Chinese territory one nation. Once a new dynasty establishes itself, its last assignment is to come up with a strategy to absorb the Korean peninsula. This time as well, Korea was in a difficult circumstance due to China's invasion, and the Korean king must have undergone quite a difficult experience. China then began to send envoys to try to force Korea's submission to them without there being the need for a war. However, for the Chinese envoy to enter Korea, he had to cross the Dalai River. The Dalai River had stepping stones, separate stones spaced out across the river. This particular Chinese envoy was to come that following August, but once the monsoon season begins here in Korea, the stepping stones disappear under the water as the river swells. Korea was well aware that if they did not receive the envoy graciously, China might invade and the Korean people would suffer. And so their stance was, at that time, welcoming the envoy was absolutely necessary. Because Korea did not have money, however, the king put out an advertisement asking if anyone could connect posts together or create a flatboard bridge. At that time, Cho Han Jun, an ancestor of True Mother's maternal grandmother, Cho Won Mo, sold everything he had to build a bridge. After he completed the bridge, he had about three Korean coins left, worth roughly three dollars. To attend the following day's opening ceremony, he bought some new shoes to replace his worn-out ones. He placed his shoes at his bedside and fell asleep. That night, he dreamt of an elderly man clothed in white, who called to him, Han Juna, Han Juna, your meritorious services are great indeed. However, why did you spend that three dollars on a pair of shoes? If you had invested all your money, even that last three dollars, I was going to send the Prince of Heaven, but I shall send a princess instead. In this way, True Mother's family has a historic ancestry, prepared for a long time in order to save the nation, ever since the time of this great-grandfather of long ago, Cho Han Jun. As you may know, True Mother was born at 4.30 in the morning on February 10, 1943, the sixth day of the first month by the lunar calendar. 
She was born at home as an only daughter into the last of three generations that produced only one daughter and all living together in one home. Her address was number 26, Shinwi village in Anju town, Anju county in Pyongan province. When she was born, her father had a visionary dream in which the morning sunlight was shining beautifully through a dense forest of deep green pine trees. On the branch of one pine tree was a pair of cranes dancing affectionately. Upon seeing this extraordinary dream, he named true mother Hakja after the name of the bird. This photograph shows True Mother's hometown, Shinwi village in Anju. It's a view from the old days. It was such a beautiful and snug area. If we look at True Mother's family background, Han sung -un and Hong sun -ae, True Mother's parents, married. And then True Mother was conceived and born. Grandmother Cho Won Mo had been a devoted Christian since she was young and later took her daughter Hong Sun -ae, who was later named Demonim, to church all the time. At that time, there was a pastor named Lee Yong Do who led 30,000 believers, which is a very large number. Reverend Lee's church was called the New Jesus Church. When Reverend Lee saw Demonim, it is said that he blessed her, saying, Rejoice, daughter of Hong Yuil. Your child shall be the king of the universe if it be a son, or the queen of the universe if it be a daughter. He gave this blessing. When True Mother was four years old, they began to go to the Inside the Womb Church. Uh, Ho Ho Bin was the leader of that church. When True Mother and Hong Sun -e Demonim, Mother's mother, arrived holding hands, she prophesied, This is the one who will become Heaven's bride. Grandmother Cho Won Mo always held True Mother as a child and taught her, saying, your father is not your biological father, Han Sung Un. Your father is your heavenly father. Thus it is said that each time True Mother said father to herself, she was reminded of heavenly father. That tells us something about her life. I will read a few lines from True Father's words about the foundation to receive the Messiah and preparation for the bride. Why should a man of 40 marry a young girl like mother, who is just 17? But Eve fell before she turned 17, at the age of 16. Since the returning Lord was predestined to return in Korea according to God's providence, the mission was transmitted through three great women over 40 years in order that mother could meet the returning Lord. They are Kim Song-do of the Holy Lord Church, who is Jong Su wons grandmother, and then Ho Ho Bin of the Inside the Womb Church, and then their missions were all passed on to the era of the returning Lord, the era of mother. True mother could be chosen after winning over all the age groups beginning from 80 to 70, 70 to 60, 60 to 50, 50 to 40, 40 to 30, 30 to 20, and 20 to 10. This took 14 years. By passing on the blessing in this manner, one goes back to the original position. This is what Father explained. This is a very important concept. If you took Korea and divided it in half, on the right side were 12 central figures prepared to receive the Messiah, and on the left there were 12 groups prepared to receive Eve, in other words, the one who would become the true mother. Representing the 12 male central figures were Reverend Pek Nam Ju, Reverend Lee Yong Do, and Reverend Kim Baek Moon. 
These people were Christian, able type, spiritual central figures who had received revelations on parts of our divine principle. And when they met those who were spreading the word, they understood that it was related to the returning Lord. You can look at them as people whom heaven embodied and cultivated through revelations. Meanwhile, on the west side of Korea, preparations were being made to receive the Messiah's bride. Out of those 12 types, there was the Eve type, which Kim Song-do and Ho Ho-bin, with the Inside the Womb Church, and Mrs. Park Ul-yong, Jehovah's wife, led. In True Father's March 7, 1968 speech, it says, Eve, the Messiah's bride, must come to earth and overcome everything that Eve failed to do. This was Father's words. Eve did not fall only physically and sexually, but due to the fall, she also lost the foundation of God's heart. Thus, the position of Eve had to be restored to the unfallen heart of a daughter, a younger sister, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a queen. She would have to inherit a heart that was one with God and the heart of the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind. Through these spiritual groups, these 12 spiritual groups, True Mother's mission was to personally restore, all on her own and from the very bottom, these eight stages of heart which Eve had lost. To explain more about the Holy Lord Church, this lady named Reverend Kim Song-do had already received revelation from heaven about aspects of the fall before the principle was ever written down. She was already receiving important revelations about parts of the principle that we have learned, such as that the fall was caused by illicit love, that it was not right for Jesus to have died in the way he did, that God had two great sorrows which were the sorrow of seeing the fall but not being able to intervene and the sorrow of seeing Jesus bear the cross. Also, that Jesus would return in the flesh. When I was working at the History Compilation Committee in Seoul, I interviewed many people who had attended this Holy Lord Church some years ago. When I asked them about what was usually taught there, they answered, education for the bride. Therefore, the Holy Lord Church was the church that educated about the conscience and about purity and offered devotion to build a foundation for the Messiah's bride. Grandmother Cho Won Mo and Hong Sun E Demunim, mother's mother, attended this church. Also, during her childhood, our true mother also attended the Holy Lord Church. After Reverend Kim Song Do passed away, Ho Ho Bin, who was in charge of the Holy Lord Church in Pyongyang, took over her position. From then on, secular people began to call the Holy Lord Church the Inside the Womb Church. It is said that they prepared all the food that Jesus would have consumed from when he was born until he reached the age of 33 and also made all the clothes that Jesus, as the Messiah, would have worn from when he was born through childhood and as an adult. Every day, they offered between 700 and 3,000 baos each, and while they were making clothes, they were not allowed to even go to the bathroom, because it was said that evil spirits would come in. So they did seven-day fasts, after which they offered a three-day condition because food residue might still be in the stomach. After all that, they could begin making the clothes. In the inside the womb church, they reverently prepared to receive the Messiah while singing songs of praise. 
Therefore, we can understand the Inside the Womb Church as having set the model course for the preparatory foundation to receive the Messiah. There, they taught what kind of regulations and etiquette were necessary to attend the Messiah when he comes to earth. This was the church that Grandmother Cho Won Mo and Hong Sun Ae, that is Demunim, and True Mother attended. Out of these 12 groups, which were the foundation to prepare to receive the Messiah, Pak Wol Re, said to be Jehovah's wife, was a very important woman. Another name she went by is Pak Ul Ryong. Mrs. Pak was the one who received the revelation about the wife's qualifications to become the true parent of heaven, earth and humankind. This happens in the last stage of the eight-stage course, from the position of daughter up to the position of the wife of Jehovah. True Father had to be certified as the Messiah by each woman who received revelations about the eight stages. The entire revelation was not given all at once to one person, but one woman would receive teachings or a revelation on one part, such as about the daughter or about the younger sister. Mrs. Pak wol was the woman who inherited the very last stage, which covered the woman's heart in the position of the true parent of heaven, earth and humankind. True Father was ultimately able to have the entire foundation for the bride that heaven prepared on earth transferred over to him. When by observing the process for Father to be certified as the Messiah, Mrs. Pak wol who did not accept True Father at first, came to accept him over time. Conclusively, as a foundation for the bride, the Holy Lord Church which from revelations regarded the fall to have been sexual in nature, set a tradition that emphasized purity education and educated the bride so that the bride could receive the Messiah. The inside the womb church through Reverend Ho Ho Bin in the position of the bride inherited the establishment of the foundation to receive the Messiah. Moreover, all eight times of foundation for the heart were transferred to both True Father and True Mother. Hence, the foundation of the bride was transferred from Kim Song Do to Ho Ho Bin, Jo On Mo, and Hong Sun Ae Demonim. What you see on the PowerPoint here summarizes this. The Holy Lord Church, preparations for a pure and conscientious bride. The inside the womb church, foundation to attend the Messiah, and eight types of the bride's foundation of heart. This was the process to inherit everything and prepare the bride through three generations, those of Grandmother Cho Won Mo, Hong Sun Ae Demonim, and True Mother. I'm going to move on to True Mother's childhood now, during her elementary school years. True Mother was living in the northern half of Korea while it was occupied by the Soviet Union after the end of the Second World War. The United States was governing southern Korea from 1945 to 48. North and South Korea had been divided at the 38th parallel. And from 1948 or so, people were officially not allowed to cross the border. And North Korea had been making active preparations for war. Despite the fact that at this time, True Father was being taken from Pyongyang to Hungnam prison, Grandmother Cho Won Mo received a revelation from heaven saying, Head to the south in search of the Lord. And so, they began their journey south. It seems as if history had predicted this. In 1950, they would never have thought that the headquarters church would be in Chongpudong, Seoul, that our headquarters would be established there. But the amazing fact is that the school that True Mother enrolled in was the Hyochang Elementary School, which was in Hyochangdong, right next to Chongpudong. In this situation, amid the Korean War and streams of refugees, they followed heaven's guidance and headed to the city of Taegu. But as the Chinese Communist Army advanced, 
again following heaven's guidance, they went to Cheju Island in the very far south. There, True Mother entered the fifth grade in Hyodon Elementary School. So in quick succession, they went from Seoul to Chola, that is Tegu, to Cheju Island, and then finally back up north to Chuncheon. They were living in Chuncheon in March 1956, when Mother graduated from the Bongi Elementary School. Next, let us look at True Mother's first meeting with True Father. During Mother's school days in Tegu and before Hongsune Demunim met True Father in Seoul, Demunim, True Mother's mother, had a dream in which she saw a pair of golden dragons. In fact, Demunim, a True Mother's mother, had already dreamed of a young man twice during her early days during her time at the Holy Lord Church. As she was growing up, she had received directions from this young man spiritually, and so she remembered his face well. One day, however, Hongsune Demonim met a church elder who had been in the Holy Lord Church. His name was Jong Sok Jon, who had come south during the Korean War, and Reverend Jong told her his story. He said, there is a church that teaches the fall, which we were all concerned about, was an illicit sexual act. We were already aware that there have been revelations that the Messiah is here. I have visited that place and met him. You should come sometime. This is what Mr. Chong said. So Hongsune Demonim went with Mr. Chong to Chongpadong in Yongsangu, Seoul. As soon as True Father came out of his room, Demonim was so surprised that she fell over in a faint, because walking steadily towards her was the very man that during her younger days, during her childhood, she had dreamed of. Hongsune Demonim did not need to hear the divine principle or anything at all. She at once testified that she recognized Father for who he was right away and she knelt down before him. I interviewed Hongsune Demonim before she passed away and she described this incident so vividly. And then while they were living in Chuncheon, north of Seoul, about a year after Demonim met with True Father, Demonim brought Han Hakja her daughter, the future true mother, to the Chongpadong church. That was in March 1956. It was the year that true mother had turned 13 years old. As soon as true mother appeared holding Hong Sune's hand, father was so moved that he closed his eyes tightly and repeated three times, Han Hakja has been born in Korea. Father had already spiritually known that mother would fulfill Eve's position and the mission of the mother of humankind, the position of the true mother. In true father's speech of July 31st, 1996, God's goal for human perfection is recorded. Adam and Eve were to grow to maturity and marry as husband and wife. God would then assume physical form through Adam and Eve's bodies, multiply by having God's direct children, form a perfect family, and finally that heavenly family was to expand and the heavenly nation was to be established. In other words, if Adam and Eve had not fallen, they would have become husband and wife, and when they did, God would have entered their bodies and produced his own children. The expansion of the heavenly kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, God's dream. In Father's July 1st, 1990 speech, he talks about the path to true parents' perfection. And in the speech from February 28, 1988, he talks in more detail about the conditions for true fathers and true mothers' perfection. He says, 
If God intends to live with love, he cannot do so alone. Love takes place only within relationships. Do you think Reverend Moon can possess love or the Holy Spirit on his own? We need the person named Han Hakja. When love occurs, the fortunes of heaven and earth are moved and applied, intoxicating all the cells of the body. In the end, Reverend Moon's perfection is possible through the person of Han Hakja, and vice versa. The same goes for the conditions and laws needed to fulfill that purpose. As you see, the qualifications to say you are a parent is not given by the parents themselves. Even if you are married, if you do not bear children, you cannot gain the qualification to be a parent. This qualification is made not by the parents, but by the children. Similarly, a husband's qualification is gained in the same way. The husband does not call himself a husband. The wife is the one and only person who can call him her husband. It is the same for the wife. Her husband is the only one in existence who calls her his wife. In the end, the wife's perfection comes through her husband, and the husband's perfection comes through his wife. The parents' perfection comes through their children. This was the same for the true parents of humankind. The standard for true mother's perfection was expressed in a speech of January 1, 1997, as God created Adam. Adam attains perfection together with Eve. An absolute subject partner creates an absolute object partner. Likewise, an absolute object partner creates an absolute subject partner. This is two-sided perfection, mutual perfection. We can see that father's perfection and mother's perfection constitutes mutual perfection and joint perfection. Thus, vertical unity can be understood as God, true father and true mother, completely united as a trinity. In a speech of December 31, 1967, Father talks about the significance of True Mother's manifestation. The Holy Spirit must come on earth as the Mother Spirit and use the body of a bride. When the Messiah physically appears on earth, his bride must know all the secrets of the heavenly way and must fulfill the qualifications of the bride. Already, True Mother had received revelations and had been trained through the Holy Lord Church and the Inside the Womb Church in how the Messiah would come and what process the bride would go through, as well as how the bride should attend and unite with the Messiah. The bride must prepare a family and a nation and world that would receive the Messiah, because True Father is clearly stating here that because he lost the realm of the bride equal to the realm of the Christian culture, he had to establish an equivalent realm of the bride centering on mother. On April 11, 1966, true parents held their holy wedding. Before their wedding ceremony, on March 27, 1960, they had first held an engagement ceremony. They then held four rituals. The first ritual was the advent of the returning Lord in Korea to proclaim that the returning Lord had come on earth. The second was the unity between the incorporeal Father and the corporeal Father, in other words, the invisible God and the Messiah who had substantially come to earth, that they had become one and appeared as the substantial God. The third was the offering of the crown of glory. This represented the mission to complete everything that Jesus had been unable to complete. The fourth was the offering of the crown. If human beings had not fallen, our heavenly parent would have been the king of the earth and would have had the sovereignty over the world. True Father's desire was to help God actually achieve His will by saving all fallen people and making it possible for God to be recognized on earth as the original king. Therefore, True Father made a promise through these four rituals that he would accomplish God's will without fail. Then, after an engagement ceremony, they held the holy wedding. There have been countless leaders of small religions, but they do not make promises in advance of what they will accomplish. Reading True Parents' words now in the present day, we know they have really achieved and fulfilled everything they predicted.
알 수가 있는 것입니다. True Parents Holy Wedding took place on April 11, 1960, on the foundation of a 14-year course. After Korea's liberation in 1945, from 1946 to 1960, the foundational 14-year course was laid. The engagement ceremony of the first three couples took place, and then True Parents Holy Wedding. Father said that these three couples were established because the three archangels were in positions to attend the original Adam and Eve, but because Lucifer fell and the other archangels could not fulfill their responsibility, these three couples, the three disciples, had the duty to attend Father and unite with him. The Holy Wedding was the marriage supper of the Lamb mentioned in the book of Revelation, and it took place in two parts. The first ceremony was the ceremony of parents restored through indemnity, which was to establish the true parents as the original parents by paying all the indemnity for the fallen world. The second ceremony was the ceremony of the parents of glory, which, as a ceremony of the original parents of glory, signified the end of the fallen world and the establishment of the heavenly parent as king. Here is a photograph from their holy wedding ceremony. True Mother said in her message on December 25, 2012, that right after the holy wedding, she resolved, I must complete restoration through indemnity during my lifetime, and second, I must liberate God without fail. I will give birth to twelve children. She added, I had already understood these points before I met True Father. Heaven had already sufficiently trained many churches with different subject matter and had sent partial revelations to their members. But True Mother connected everything and understood it. The preparation that these churches had made were heaven's prepared foundation, centering on True Mother, for her to tie everything together and understand it. Well, True Mother's change of status, this is important information. I said this before, but Eve's fall was not just an issue of lineage involving a sexual act or a sexual situation. The problem was that Eve also lost the original God's internal feminine nature, one of God's attributes. Thus, True Mother had to represent all women from the position of a daughter, a younger sister, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, the queen, and God's heart, and the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind. She had to establish these conditions until Father could say, you began at the very bottom, and now, as a model example, you have indemnified everything. This was Mother's course. Therefore, she qualified for the position of the Messiah by fulfilling the stages of the daughter and the younger sister. Mother qualified for the position of a true parent by fulfilling the stages of the wife, mother, grandmother and queen. She succeeded in the position of the queen of queens by inheriting God's heart and the heart of the true parents of heaven, earth and humankind. Father's words about Mother's change of status were also recorded just as he said them. The dates shown here are extracted from the sermons of the Reverend Sun Myung Moon, the 600 volumes. The 14-year course from 1963 to 1977 constituted the change of status from the daughter to the younger sister. True parents married in 1960, but for three years mother lived separately from father at a member's home. That is why it is from 1963 to 1977. Though True Mother was already married to True Father, she could not see him from this perspective. Instead, she had to see Father from the perspective of a daughter. True Father had to see Mother as a daughter, and True Mother had to see True Father as her father. This was the first course. True Mother had to take a path from the lowest stage as a representative of humankind. 
In father's messages from that time, it says that whenever mother needed to use even more than just ten dollars, she had to receive approval from him directly. Moreover, Demonim, mother's mother, and true mother were in sacrificial positions in which they had to offer consistent devotion, so much so that Demonim could not enter through the front door of the church but had to come and go through the back door. As a result of this seven-year course, True Mother could sufficiently attend Father in the daughter position and could read Father's heart. Over three or four years, Mother subjugated Satan in front of heaven and became a successful woman on the individual level. She was also successful in laying a foundation on the family level during the four-year period. The providential significance of this seven-year course is explained in Father's words as the transition from the completion level of the growth stage to the stage of perfection. Throughout the duration of the course of restoration through indemnity, an environment of absolute faith, absolute love and absolute obedience had to be created. It was also the traditional period to lay the foundation of the perfection of the family. It was the period to find and establish the four major holy days and the period to establish from the three couples to the 124 couples. Through the proclamation of the Day of Victory of Heaven on October 4, 1976 and the Day of Victory of Earth on February 23, 1977, True Mother gained victory by accomplishing all these things and many true children were born. True Mother looks happy. This picture is not at Kimpo or Incheon International Airport, this is Yoido Airport, formerly in the middle of the town. In this photo, she is beside Father, receiving flowers before departing overseas. Around this time, she gave her first public testimony. She said there was a five-year gap between the birth of Kukchenim and Kwonjenim, 1971 and 1975. How serious was it that she ended up having a miscarriage? Her heart was filled with desperation to fulfill God's will, to restore Eve's position and to become a model example. True mother was so sinless and pure. She had to take a course toward victory and she had to begin from the very bottom. True Mother's life was so excruciatingly difficult. She had to give birth to children almost every year. And on top of that, she was assisting Father at the same time. Demonim, True Mother's mother, supported Mother as her servant. According to Father's words, the three-year period was a battle to become a successful woman on the individual level, and the next four-year period was a battle on the family level. There is also a part where Father joyfully says that True Mother and Hong Sune Demonim have succeeded in their unimaginable trial period. After 1976, Mother achieved the standard of victory and her life became whole. Father said, on our holy wedding anniversary this year, 1977, on February 23rd, I am treating Mother differently from before. This is how difficult and intense her task has been. Here, Father is speaking joyfully about how Mother has passed through that course by herself. On that foundation, Father did a speaking tour that included the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. and New York City's Madison Square Garden. Now that True Mother had succeeded in the 14-year course, she went from the stage of the younger sister to the stage of the wife, from 1977 to 1991. The key point here is that True Mother begins the 10-year world tour course as a mother of the world. This is historic. Eve neglected Adam, betrayed God, and committed the fall. As we have learned in Divine Principle, restoration through indemnity takes a reverse course. True Mother had to overcome and achieve the opposite of what Eve did to Adam. Therefore, since Eve ignored Adam, True Mother had to testify to True Father as the true Adam and testify to True Father's teachings. 
This constituted the 10-year course in which she went on world tours and was successful. On February 27th, 1990, at the True Parents Welcoming Rally and the proclamation of the parents of heaven and earth, Father declared Mother to be second in command. Moreover, in his speech of July 1st, 1997, he clearly depicts Mother by Father's side after he proclaimed the age of the providence of restoration of the parents' rights. It is this speech here. In 1990, on our 30th anniversary, we passed through the world stage centered on the family. Now, even if I am gone and mother alone remains, there will be no further hindrance to God's will. Finally, the realm of liberation for all women centered on mother could be proclaimed on earth through this morning's ceremony. Women must create a global women's alliance and carry out a campaign to eradicate prostitution. I can now represent the true parents even if I am alone, and mother can represent the true parents even when she is alone. Father is the number one leader, and mother follows next as the number two leader. Now they are on the same level. On March 27, 1990, father spoke plainly about mother's successful status. Through this successful condition, from 1991 to 1999, mother's status changed from the status of a wife to that of a mother. A key event for this took place on April 10, 1992, mother's inauguration as the president of the Women's Federation for World Peace. On the foundation of her course to testify to father and to his heart and love, while touring the world, the Women's Federation for World Peace was founded on April 10, 1992. I personally did not know that the founding of the Women's Federation for World Peace was this significant. I was very surprised when I read about it in Father's speeches, Satan's condition until then, which enabled him to multiply, had come through women. Women are the ones who could bear his children in this satanic lineage. However, because True Mother prepared this successful foundation, and because of the founding of WFWP, all the women in the world are no longer Satan's or Lucifer's women, but are now included in True Mother's realm. Therefore, on March 21st, 1999, around the time of the 360 million couple blessing ceremony, Lucifer surrendered. Why? Because he'd lost the condition to multiply the fallen seed. True Mother succeeded in bringing this amazing result of embracing all women of the world. Thus, Satan had to surrender because nothing remained for him to stand on. The proclamation of the age of the settlement of true parents and the true parents and the proclamation of the completed testament age took place. Then, on June 14, 1999, at the time of the congratulatory declaration of True Parents' cosmic victory, Father went to the airport and tearfully greeted True Mother, who was returning from her 80-city speaking tour. In recognition of Mother's hard work during that period, True Father presented her with a plaque. True Father presented this plaque in his own name. From that moment on, Mother's position was equal to Father's. This photo is of that commemoration ceremony. One of True Mother's speeches during the worldwide speaking tour she conducted from 1991 to 1999 was entitled The Central Role of Women in the Ideal World. It was about how fallen Eve needed to be restored to original Eve. Another one was True Parents and the Completed Testament Age, which revealed what kind of age we are living in. The view of the principles of the providential history of salvation. That speech explained what the Messiah had done on earth, 
up until then for the providence of salvation. The speech entitled In Search of the Origin of the Universe covered what we must ultimately do to discover the origin of our universe. There was also the speech entitled True Family and True Universe centering on true love and the speech entitled Blessed Marriage and Eternal Life. True Mother spoke more than 600 times on these speaking tours. At this time, True Father did not proclaim himself as the Messiah, the Savior, or King of Kings. It was Mother who testified to Father, as she underwent her course of worldwide speaking tours. She went on an amazing journey, testifying to Father as the Messiah, the Savior, and the King of Kings. True Mother appealed in her own words as she trekked up the tremendous path of restoration through indemnity, a path that was the reverse of the one trodden by Eve, who blocked the original Adam from reaching perfection. Mother declared to the worldwide children in the Cain world that True Father was the returning Lord, the Savior, and the true parent. This was her amazing testimony. Thus, in 1992, she gave her speech multiple times. This was father telling mother that she needed to connect the seven most powerful nations and engraft them to Korea. In the speech of April 11, 1992, it says, I unequivocally proclaim that the true father is Sun Myung Moon and the true mother is Hak Jahan. There is no room for doubt in what Father said. We must absolutely remember the amazing fact that True Mother laid a foundation for Father as she accompanied him and restored, little by little, what Eve had lost. We must remember this. On August 24, 1992, Father said, I proclaimed that my wife Hak Jahan and I are the true parents of humankind, the Saviour, the returning Lord and Messiah. On another occasion, he says, God's providence of salvation is about finding and establishing the true parents and realizing the ideal of goodness God envisioned at the time of creation. Mother's change of status from a mother to grandmother occurred from 1999 to 2000. During those years, True Mother carried out a worldwide 40-city speaking tour. When True Mother had 12 cities to go in Europe, Father was in the United States. He would go to a beach and offer devotions from 4 o'clock in the morning till 10 p.m. at night. On June 1st, 2000, True Father suddenly proclaimed the new day of settlement following the second Noah's 40-day flood judgment. As we know well, at the time of the 40-day flood judgment, everyone died except the eight people in Noah's family who had built the ark. Three days before the flood, Noah's family entered the ark which was then completed. For 40 days it rained, but it took another 60 days until Noah could finally set foot on dry ground. Therefore, 60 days, 40 days plus 3 days makes 103 days together on the ark. Near the time of Hyangjinim's son Shin Manlim's 100-day ceremony, which celebrates 100 days since the birth, True Father spoke about the flood judgment in Noah's day and said to change Shin Manlim's 100-day ceremony to a 103-day ceremony to commemorate the day Noah came out of the ark. In other words, if the flood judgment in Noah's day had annihilated humankind, because the second flood judgment is the day of judgment that true parents announce, they resolved to bring about human salvation by becoming one through the word, and through the word, true parents pass judgment on the entire Cain-type world. After the 103-day ceremony, Father proclaimed the return of the oceans to God on June 17th in the year 2000, the return of the land to God on June 24th, and the return of the cosmos to God on June 30th. 
These established the condition of returning to God the environment that Satan had taken. And on September 20, 2000, Father said that all blessed families should receive the transition of the three ages four position foundation registration unification blessing ceremony. The three ages refer to a great transition to transcend the Old Testament age, the New Testament age and the Completed Testament age. The four position foundation is what God intended to originally establish and finally, registration goes along with the concept of having a unified blessing ceremony by registering the ideal families of the original Chonil Guk. With the abolition of paradise and hell and the proclamation of the registration in the kingdom of heaven on December 3rd, 2000, we received the transition of the Three Ages Blessing Ceremony. From 2000 to 2003, True Mother's status changed from grandmother to queen, as we know the final accomplishment of the enthronement ceremony for God's kingship took place on January 13, 2001. True parents then held the holy marriage blessing ceremony of the parents of heaven and earth opening Chonil Guk and the coronation of the king of the blessed families of the peace and unity of the cosmic parents and the parents of heaven and earth. The important thing here is the coronation of the king of the blessed families. Enthronement or coronation here refers to true parents coming to earth and our heavenly parent coming, using true parents' bodies, by uniting completely with and residing in true parents' family. Thus, on 2000, 2003, October 25th, True Father says that through the unity of the parents of heaven and the parents of earth, the age of the parents of heaven and earth began, and True Father and True Mother became one entity. During the holy days of earlier years, Mother would bow to Father and then True Parents would offer a bow together. However, from then on, from a certain point, Mother did not need to bow to Father. It was the time when True Mother could work like True Father simultaneously on earth and in the spirit world. After this, we entered the fourth providential age, which Father described as the age in which God appears in True Parent's image. The first photo shows the ceremony of the King of the Blessed Families. True Mother's change of status from a queen to a woman in unity with God occurred between 2003 and 2006. The key period is December 17 to December 20, 2004. The proclamation of the establishment of Chonilguk and registration with the New York State government happened during this time. The New York State government actually registered the establishment of Chonil Guk. The word absolute was added and Chonil Guk was registered and documented. From September 12, 2005 to June 13, 2006, True Parents went on a global speaking tour for the inauguration of UPF the Universal Peace Federation. Their speeches focused on UPF, which they said was the last providential organization. Afterwards, on June 13, 2006, the entrance to Chonjonggung and the coronation ceremony took place. It was a wonderful day for God to enter the new Chonjonggung Palace and be directly present on earth. The coronation was a wonderful occasion in which the amazing accomplishment of God being able to appear as the king and queen using true parents' bodies occurred. True Father said that the coronation was held based on the complete unity of God and true parents, that it was no longer necessary to distinguish between God and true parents, and that true parents did not need to bow to God. What did this mean from the point of principle? Did it imply that God and Jesus were the same God? We know from the divine principle that this is not the case, because God is the fundamental being. Even if Adam were perfect, God and Adam would remain in an eternal father-son relationship. The difference is that they would have become completely one. They would have united. Adam becomes perfected as an entity equal to God. Now to establish Chonil Guk, because it needs sovereignty, territory and citizenry, true parents began to proclaim heavenly tribal messiahship. True mother's change of status from unity with God to the true parents of heaven, earth and humankind happened between 2006 and 2013.
After the coronation ceremony of the King of Peace, coronations took place three additional times. The coronation of the King of Cosmic Peace and Unity on June 13, 2006. The coronation for the authority of the liberation of God, the King of Kings, on January 15 and January 31, 2009. And the coronation ceremony for the settlement of the ABLE UN from April 29 to May 9, 2010. Then there is the coronation ceremony held on the foundation of this substantial trinity, the establishment of the foundation day of Chonilguk and the enthronement ceremony of the true parents of heaven, earth and humankind on the 13th day of the first month of the heavenly calendar. Thus True Mother completed everything alongside True Father. Let us give a big round of applause to our true parents of heaven, earth and humankind. Through these eight stages, Reverend and Mrs. Moon completed everything together and reaped the results of that success. On May 14, 2008, True Father said that True Mother succeeded in reaching the position of perfection. Additionally, it is an important key point that God assumes the form of True Parents, beginning from the Cosmic Assembly for the settlement of the True Parents of Heaven, Earth and Humankind who, as God's embodiment, proclaim the Word. On August 1, 1996, Father also said that with the Origin Division Union action, the Holy Father, the Holy Son and the Holy Daughter became the completion of the Trinity. Also, that the unity of the cosmic parent and the parents of heaven and earth became the true parents of heaven, earth and humankind. And the unity of the God of night and the God of day became the God of night and day. On the 17th day of the 11th month on the heavenly calendar in 2011, True Parents proclaimed the day of the greatest victory of Chonilguk. In this proclamation it says, the day of the greatest victory of Chonilguk has been accomplished in an eternal victory. This is the conclusion that has been reclaimed through being completed and concluded. Aju, the true God and true parents have perfected their unity. God is complete, fulfilled and perfect. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. September 3rd, 2012, true father ascended to the spirit world. Before he did, he proclaimed, I have completed everything. Then, on the 13th day of the first month on the heavenly calendar in 2013, Mother, attending Father in the Spirit, proclaimed Chonilguk Foundation Day. The holy wedding of the true parents of heaven, earth and humankind, the Chonilguk coronation ceremony of the true parents of heaven, earth and humankind, the proclamation of the founding year of Chonilguk and the Chonilguk Foundation Day registration blessing ceremony all took place at that time. Through True Father's battle with and victory over Satan, he concluded the Age of Restoration through indemnity, and True Mother opened the era of Chonilguk in substance, the revolutionary era after the coming of heaven, and is now undergoing the four-year course of the completion age. True Mother is urging us to advance without ceasing in order to realize the dream of one human family. She is speaking about Vision 2020, substantiating Father's legacy, investing into raising capable global leaders, supporting the providence of heavenly tribal messiahship and innovative mission work worldwide. She enacted the Chonilguk constitution and compiled the Chonilguk holy scriptures. In conclusion, True Mother's lifelong achievements mark the end for the fallen past and the start of a new history of creation. Mother completed everything that she had resolved to do after True Parents' holy wedding. She proclaimed the opening of the age of the holy reign of peace, Chonilguk. Through the true emperor of Chonilguk with holiness and virtue, the emperor of of absolute victory over the whole. Through the Chonilguk Foundation Day, the foundation year of Chonilguk was proclaimed. True Mother, who is determined to advance without ceasing, has resolved to restore seven nations by 2020. Based on Foundation Day, I believed that we, the blessed families, are our heavenly parents' children, that we should faithfully attend our heavenly parent, act upon the instructions of our heavenly parent, and accomplish our mission as heavenly tribal messiahs. Although this content is inadequate to properly deal with all these issues, I will conclude my lecture. Thank you. <laughs>